guys, welcome to my video. Um, today I thought I would basically share with you what I th would recommend to you as a way to get into PC gaming or just to update your current rig and get a new machine. Uh, now what this is, this is um, my recommended rig, but it's my recommended rig for around a thousand pounds. So there's no stupid money, there's no you know GTX 680s in there, it's all about price performance. Obviously, um, this is my opinions and I can almost guarantee that your opinions will be different and you would do things differently. But if I was going to recommend a rig, this is what it would be. For my motherboard suggestion, it's got to be a Z77 board. Now the one I'd recommend is this one here from Gigabyte. It's the D3H. Now the reason I recommend this is because it's got all the ports you need. Uh, it's very well priced at £77 and it actually supports um, Crossfire. Um, this is an Intel board and supports socket 1155. For the processor, it's got to be the i5-3570K. Now the reason I recommend this is because it's great price performance, it will do anything you can throw at it, and for gaming you can't actually do much better. Now you're going to need something to cool that, so you're going to want to overclock your processor, and the best thing to do that is with a Corsair water cooling kit. Now the one I recommend is the H60. Now this is the cheapest one, but it will give you really good overclocks and water cooling makes a lot less noise than a standard air cooler would. Be note that there is there is a new um, Corsair cooler, the H80i. It costs an extra £25, but if you're in the market for something a little better, then that's the one I would really recommend. Uh, RAM, 8GB is perfect, and I would personally recommend the Corsair Vengeance. Um, you know, it's it's 1600MHz RAM, and it will do the job very nicely. Now, the graphics card, now this is I, really the most important part of your rig. Um, the reason I would recommend a AMD card at the moment is because the 7850 is just, from a price performance um, standpoint, an absolutely fantastic card. You're going to get some really good frame rates out of it, and at £180, um, it's really, really good value. And if you've got the motherboard that I recommend as well, you can stick two in Crossfire, and those will blitz through any games performing um, better than or equal to a GTX 680 or a Radeon 7970. So I'd really recommend this card. Now you're going to need something to power all that, and the reason I recommend this Corsair Enthusiast Series 750 Watt is because you've got to look ahead. Um, if you bought a 500 or even a 600 watt power supply, then that would be absolutely perfect for a single card, but then um, that eliminates the possibility uh, of adding another um, graphic card at a later date. And so you've got to look ahead really, you've got to think, well in the future I might want to put another card in so when the next series of cards come out you can get another one cheap so I would really recommend getting this Corsair 750 watt power supply now you're going to want an SSD I cannot specify and recommend anything better than an SSD for your computer it speeds everything up so quick and it means that everything loads a lot quicker and when you want to boot into your OS it happens so much quicker now the one I would recommend and the one that I indeed have is the Samsung 830 series. Um, it's 128 gigabytes and it only costs around 80 pounds at the moment so use that for your boot drive and you can fit a couple of games on there as well. You're going to want a normal hard drive as well but um, realistically any hard drive you can get at a good deal um, is going to be the right option for you as long as it's a 7200 RPM drive. Now you're probably going to want an optical drive, some cases won't support one but they're so cheap you really should get one. So I would recommend any DVD drive, you could get a Blu-ray drive if you want to play Blu-ray drives, but the one I would recommend is the LG long number, um, but it's about £13, so that is the one I'd recommend. <coughs> now you're going to need a copy of Windows. Now this is where um, opinions will differ. Now I am running Windows 8 as you can see. Alright, it came up on the other screen but the start menu's just come up. Um, but yeah, I'm running Windows 8 and I would recommend it. It's basically just Windows 7 but it's got quite a few small improvements to the whole feel and then you've got the other side of the OS for, which is more supported for touch and laptops really but 
there's no reason not to buy Windows 8. Everything performs as good or better. And so there's no real reason to get Windows 7. So I would say, if you're going to get an OS, get Windows 8. Now for the case, you're going to want to make sure you get something that's really nice. Everyone's going to have a different opinion on it. I'm currently using um, NZXT's Phantom, which I really like. It's about £100. But if I was going to buy a new case right now and recommend one, then it would have to be the Corsair Carbide series, and it's the 400R. This is a really good looking case. Um, it doesn't have a window, but it does have um, cooling on the side if you added extra fans. So although you don't have a window, your cooling will be better for it. So this is a really nice case, and they've really thought really hard about it. And for example, when you're closing the right hand side panel, after you've done all your cable management, they've made sure that there's plenty of room to tuck all your cables behind, and that's something that, something like my NZXT Phantom, it does struggle a bit shuffling that side door, so I really would recommend this this case. Now that's it for the whole desktop. The whole desktop is going to cost you around £850. I'll put a little comment up here, I think, of how much it actually costs, and all the parts are in the description below. Um, but what if you want the full set? What if you want a monitor, mouse and keyboard? Well, for a monitor, there's some really good deals at the moment. And the one I would recommend is the Dell Ultra Sharp U2312HM. Now this is £147 currently on Amazon. It's a 1080p monitor, but it's an IPS monitor. I cannot stress enough how, unless you want um, 3D vision, um, then really, really go for an IPS or VA panel. Um, the, basically the colours are going to be a lot better. And for example, the monitor that you're seeing here is a 3D vision monitor, but it's a TN panel. And so photos and things, they just don't pop, and the colours just are nowhere near as good. But that comes with the 3D vision and the 120Hz refresh rate, whereas IPS ones are only 60Hz. But if you're going to get a monitor for £147, this 23-inch IPS monitor from Dell is an absolute steal. Now, with your keyboard and mouse, this is something you've got to think about how much you want to spend. These are the ones that I have at the moment. I have this Microsoft Sidewinder keyboard. It's a really nice keyboard, it feels really good to use, but it's not mechanical. Now, if you want a mechanical keyboard, you're going to have to spend around £70, £75. And what that means is that you'll get a bit more tactile feedback on the keys, and they'll be more responsive, and you should be able to type quicker, and it'll be easier for you to use. However, it do, they do cost more, and so if you're going to buy a keyboard, I would recommend the side window that I have here. Now, the mouse... This mouse that I'm using right here is the Logitech G400. Now this is a gaming mouse. It does have some little buttons on the side here. And so for example, if I'm playing a game like Call of Duty, I can simply assign this button here to be my secondary grenade, so like my flashbang or whatever, and it works really nice. The mouse itself feels really nice in the hand and it's really nice and easy to use. So if I was gonna recommend a mouse, I'd recommend this one. The mouse is £25 and the keyboard is £35. So that's it for my rig. Um, what would I recommend if you wanted to spend a bit more? Well, if you wanted to spend a bit more, then I would look at upgrading the keyboard. And maybe, if you're feeling quite exotic, um, is to buy two of the solid state drives. Now, if you buy two of the solid state drives, you can um, enable on your motherboard RAID 0. Now, what this will do is effectively make your drives nearly quote nearly twice as fast so not only will you be getting SSD speeds you'll be getting up to um, around 700 800 megabytes per second which will be absolutely insanely fast but the things that you want to make sure you have um, as nice are your monitor so if you you could upgrade to a more expensive monitor um, you could upgrade to a more expensive keyboard so if you're going to get a more expensive keyboard I would recommend the Corsair K90, so this one here, and so this is a mechanical keyboard, uh, um, and it's just going to be really nice and really nice to use. I'm hoping to get one very in, in a very shortly, so in a couple of months, and I'll let you know how I get on with that. Well, for the mouse, I personally I would just go with the one I've got because I really like it. The, the G400 is a fantastic mouse, and I can't see myself upgrading that soon. But if you feel you want to, then there are some nice ones from Razer, like the Razer Naga. So I would say stick with this mouse, 
but you might not agree, and so if you don't agree, you can look at getting a razor naga for about £60. And that just about wraps it up. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, hope it's been informative, and uh, leave in the comments below any suggestions for any other videos, and I'll keep this page updated, so I'll post some new rigs, this is the Christmas rig, but when some new components or better options or better deals come out, then I'll let you know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.